It is trophy time here on Sports Report. We got state finals and basketball in every division for you. We got our own trophy. You can't see it, but this is our highlight trophy. I hope the boys and girls are getting bigger trophies than that. We'll Good find gracious. out. <laughs> Let's find out. We'll start things off, Andy, at the 1A level at VCU as the Radford Bobcats take on the Lancaster Red Devils. Lancaster knocking off the three-time defending state champion Alta Vista Colonel, so coming in with momentum, but Radford is two on a 26-game winning streak. Right off the tip, it is Quinton Morton Robertson feeding Marcus Finley to get things started. That's a freshman to senior combo for Coach Rick Cormany trying to win his fourth state title. Then it's the Australian native. Blake Burdick inside, all that Aussie can deliver, and so too can Heath Grant, the two sports standout. He was a running back in football, now getting it done in basketball, but Lancaster coming right back. That's James Coleman from the outside, and then it's Calvin Henderson underneath. Three-point shot on the way for Heath Grant. It's a swish, now Radford up by 12, but coming back is Lancaster. Beautiful hook shot by Jamil Redman. And Rasul Henderson, remember the Henderson name, he co collects underneath, and then it's Burdick. Burdick again, off the glass. And going inside for Lancaster, drawing the foul, it's Rasul Henderson. Henderson's everywhere for Lancaster. The three-point shot will roll in for Marcus Finley, and Radford up eight, going to the second half. Second half action, there's 21-29, Radford, uh oh there's a steal, and it's Trayvon Henderson the other way. Oh, you got so many Hendersons, they might open up a firm now. Three-pointer for Finley, dial it up, it's good. Radford up nine, and they're on the run. Here they come, Finley to the hoop, count it. An 11-point lead at that point for Radford. Could Lancaster try to make a comeback? Well, you got to start somewhere. Here's Trayvon Henderson. And now Radford with the hand off there and a three-point shot for Heath Grant. It's money. Radford up by double figures. Lancaster trying to battle back, though. Here's Coleman on the free throw line. The jumper pull up is good. They got to play some defense, and that's not how you play defense. You don't leave Grant open. But he missed. He hit the cord, but he didn't go through the hoop. Back the other way is Henderson, and Henderson into the corner, and that's Darian Doggett, and that's how you can make a comeback. Uh, Doggett leading score for Lancaster, and then a three-pointer is good for Lancaster there by Jay Dillon. It's suddenly a two-point game, now a one-point game as the feed is good to Rasul Henderson. Here comes Radford. It is Isaiah Morton underneath. Look at the finish by Morton, and it's a three-point game. That's Quentin Morton Robertson's older brother, the veteran now at the foul line for Lancaster. Free throw is good for Trevon Henderson. It's a one-point game. Radford up five now, but not for long, as here comes Lancaster. Russell Henderson with the hoop and the harm. Up at the free throw line, the other end, this is Morton Robertson. Free throw, good. Radford now trying to break away here at the end of the ball game. They've got it against the double team. Oh, a beautiful feed inside. It's going to be good for the Bobcats. Alante Doyle. One last. Under, oh, not, underneath is Morton. Easy layup, and that's just going to seal it. And that will do it. They're very happy. They're jumping. They're happy because they get a bigger trophy than we do. Yeah, they're state champs. A 10-2 run to finish it off the fifth state title in School history for boys basketball and the fourth for coach Rick Cormany as Radford last year was disappointed with a regional semifinal loss to Galax, but this year they get it done at the 1A level. State champs closing out the year 29-1 on a 27-game winning streak. There's a the bigger trophy. They get a plaque. They don't get a trophy. But they're going to hold it up. They love it. Why not? Big win, and that's where we started off state championship. Show. 54 to 44, 10 point lead for Radford. Heath Grant and Marcus Finley combining for 30 points between them. They were 11 of 17 from the field. Rasul Henderson leading the way for the Red Devils with 14 points. A great year for them. Their first trip to the state final since 2012, but they come up short just 3 of 14 from three point land. All right, here's another trophy. We're going this time to the 3A. 3A division, and it is the boys' 3A division, Norcom and Hopewell. Norcom won this game by 27 the first time in the regional championship. Does this mean another blowout? Uh, probably not. And it's for all the marbles. You know Hopewell is motivated to get revenge here. Norcom looking to 3P, and right off the bat, it's Travis Fields going off the dribble to the 10 for two. Oh, do you commit playing on VCU floor? That can't be good. <laughs> but the other way, back comes Hopewell in the corner. Yes, three-pointer for Faison Taylor. Coming off the bench for first-year head coach Kurt Young, who was at Northern Kentucky most recently coaching college basketball on the staff there. Now Travis Fields manipulating the defense as they patiently work around. And then look at the feet. Uh-oh, in the corner wide open is a three-pointer for Deshaun Roberts, and he cans it. Roberts is good from the corner. Here comes Hopewell, though. Back and forth game. 
Norcom up right the moment. Oh, nice feed into the post for the big man. Malik Jefferson makes it good. And that size advantage with Malik Jefferson and Jayla Jefferson would be pivotal for Hopewell throughout. There is the catch and shoot. It's Oof. good for KJ Davis, the six foot six junior swingman. He's been good all year long. We switch ends at the half. We're in the second half. Now into the third quarter we go. Norcom still on top with the drive by Deontay Jones. And a good finish. Jones playing much better than he did in the state semifinals against Northside. They had to sweat that one out in overtime. And there's Travis Ingram there as he gets caught against the defense. Oh, there's a cutting Fields. That's the guy you want to get it to when the defense collapses on you. Fields with the cutting, slicing play. Oh, that's not good. Johnson with the swat. Coming the other way is Johnny Harrison. Eventually, where's he at? Where's he at? There he is. Johnny Harrison on the putback. He was Johnny on the spot on that one, uh, Andy. And now Norcom trying to rally here. Down seven in the fourth quarter and a three-pointer. That'll help cut into that deficit. Seven points lead, and it's K.J. Davis from three. And here's the miss on the other side. Here comes Ingram, and one. Oh, they call him the elevator man because he gets up and he can throw him down that time, elevating the air for two. And then the Hopewell trying to answer as the pullback is there by one of the Jeffersons. No, it's not George, it's not Wheezy, it's Malik Jefferson. <laughs> Just say Jefferson. One of them is good. It is David Gant. That is good from outside. Three-pointer. Hopewell breaks the tie after Norcom's run. 57-53. Norcom. Now it's desperation time. Down four. Who do you go to? Well, you go to that playmaker, Travis Fields. Top of the key. Going to drive against the defense. Oh. He gets it to go. Yes, he does. It's a two-point game. Why not? Here's Steele. Fields on the steal and the score in less than a minute and we're tied. We're going to overtime. Oh, some extra fun at the Siegel Center for the nightcap of the state tournament. And oh. it's a swat there by Ingram. Now the galloping Greyhounds on the run. Well, wait, they're going to pull it back. Tommy Pope says, let's, uh, let's slow down here. Let's slow down, guys. Get the ball to Fields and he'll do something good. Here he goes, driving to the rack. No good defense on both ends. Meanwhile, here is Darian Allison from the free throw line, and we're tied again. A sophomore with two clutch free throws to keep Norcom alive. So here we go, six seconds to go in overtime. Harrison has it. He is stripped by oh. Travis Fields at the horn. Ball game! Yes. Norcom completes the three-peat, and they win another state championship, their fifth in seven years. What a dramatic comeback for Leon Goolsby's Greyhounds. What a finish from Fields. Did it all game long, and then the steal and the clutch finish at the horn. Yep, there it is. Go ahead, raise it up, Coach. You deserved it. You earned it. You're pretty familiar with it at this point, but go ahead, raise it up. What a run for Norcom. 21 consecutive playoff victories. Travis Fields, you see, with 30 points. 14 of 23 from the field. Five boards, three assists, three steals. I think he sold popcorn at halftime. He did it all. The <laughs> ODU commit. KJ Davis with a double-double before fouling out. While Hopewell was led by Deontay Jones and Johnny Harrison. They combined for 31 points in defeat. A tough one for Hopewell. It's a tough one, but stay with us. We got more action coming to you. We're going to go in order. We come back. It'll be the 4A boys when we come back on Sports Report. And welcome back to Sports Report with Andy Michal. I'm Matt Hatfield. And now, Andy, I've got the trophy. You're going to have to oh, take it from me. Trophy. Yeah, well, let's see who wins the 4A boys trophy for the state championship. It's Lake Taylor against Monick. And Lake Taylor in the green uniforms as they're borrowing Maggie Walker's jerseys early on. It's JT Wahi with the basket. They had a uniform malfunction. Oh, it's not good. It's not even a school color for green, but they're going to play in them anyway. Wahi with the initial put in, and then the put back, Darren Peterson. Oh, what a follow with the jam. Let's watch it again. Get Ooh. out of the way. That'll be on his highlight reel for sure as Peterson comes out of nowhere. Monikin lost to Lake Taylor 71 57 in the regional semis, trying to get revenge. And right there it is Kwame Asidu for two off the bench. A Lake Taylor three point lead, second quarter action now. Oh, the spin move and the shot will oh, go yeah. for Darion Sebron. Nice spin move, didn't get the foul on their side. Here we go, there's Travis McPhail from three, and then there is Nick Parks on the breakaway stuff. Parks, a CNU commit there. What a pretty stuff there, and then a three-pointer from DeMonte Tyler, and inside they go to Sebron on the dish from Gabe Miller. Lake Taylor up seven, and then coming back to the way is Greg Parham with the hoop and the harm for Monikin. Right, we're just fast paced back and forth. Uh, jump ball that didn't jump the right way for Lake Taylor, but it does for Kennard Robinson. Another sub making an impact for Coach R.J. Spellsberg. Now Gabe Miller off the dribble. He pulls up and hits 11 points for him in the first half. Lake Taylor trying to 
Keep it going. Here's Bryant on the drive. No, but the tip and finish by Sebron. Well, those offensive rebounds so pivotal for Lake Town. There's McPhail again as Monikin battling back from these deficits, not letting it get too far away. And then Ahmad Elliott inside for the deuce. Just keep them in shouting distance. And Wahees is out shot this. Nice finish from JT Wahi. And he was shouting after that basket, Andy. And now Lake Taylor working around the perimeter. A three-pointer from Elliott straight away is good. Now on a 12-point lead for Lake Taylor, their largest of the ball game. Starting to pull away here, but Monica not finished. On the drive, eventually, there's the spin. Uh-oh, you don't leave a guy that wide open. There he is, Peterson wide open at the top of the key. And so many guys contributing, whether it's Peterson, Parham, George Ross, so many guys getting it done for Monikin to stay close. And then another three-pointer for DeMonte Tyler. Oh, that's demoralizing. A 10-point cushion for the Titans in green. <laughs> in green, here is Parks on the drive and one in the fourth quarter we go. Oh, see, you've got a good one in Parks. And there is Parham. He shared Player of the Year honors in Conference 20 with a couple of guys, Jalen Jarrett of Dimwitty and Jason Wade from Hanover. It's a three-point game suddenly, trying to push it back up. Oh, there's Tyler with a clutch three. Clutch three from Tyler makes it a six point game. Here's some pressure on the full court press and the steal from Travis Smith and it's an eight point lead for Newark. And Travis, the conference 17 player of the year, but Monikin is not done. They're gonna fight to the finish there as Nick Parks gets away from the defender. A six point game and now Parham for three to tie it up. Oh, it's gonna go down to the wire. Tie game at the free throw line. Parham, yes, free throw is good. And look at this run, a 12-0 run to conclude the ball game for Monikin, who stuns Lake Taylor, a 71-57 winner over the Chiefs in the regional semifinals. And the number four seed recovers from two straight playoff losses in the regionals to win five straight and cap it off with a state championship. A 12-0 run to finish. They had a 12-point lead. That hurts if you're Lake Taylor. And you see it right there, Monikin celebrating the number four seed winning the state championship. They started the season four and four, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And they are state champs. It's the jerseys. It had to be the jerseys. Who did what of this? Nick Parks and Trey John McPhail combining for 25 points. You see McPhail with nine rebounds and three blocks, while Gabe Miller and DeMonte Tyler scored 11 points apiece for Lake Taylor and a crushing defeat there. They had a great year, but a tough way to go out. And we've got more state championship highlights, Andy, including 6A and 5A. 5A girls, 6A boys, stay with us. Sports Report comes right back. Welcome back. It's the last block of the last show of the season. I'm getting sad. We ran out of sports to cover, but we're going to end with some championships. Let's go to the ladies' side of things and see what's going on in 5A girls' division. It's the Princess Sand Cavaliers, no stranger to the big court at the Siegel Center, taking on Island Springs, who lost to PA two years ago in the state championship, trying to get revenge for the regional championship loss this year in 5A South. And Early on, it'll be Franklin Harris's Lady Springers going to Jennifer Coleman, one of their playmakers in the backcourt for two. They have the first lead. <laughs> Coming right back, though, here is Cam Gatling. She scores inside, and there's a little bit of a run going on here. And Holland Springs with some presences in the paint there with Taya Bolden, CeCe Crudup, and Cam Gatling. And down by one early on, though, and then Highland Springs grabs the lead. Eight to seven, now nine, eight, Princess Anne. Back and forth we go, and there's Godiva Hubbard, the Minnesota commit, striking just inside the arc. Well, if you want to get back into a game, Hubbard is the place to go to. Meanwhile, if you're Highland Springs, you want to keep the lead, you go to Taya Borden. Hold it. She had 27 rebounds, Andy, in the state semifinals. Jumper is good for Highland Springs there, now a three-point shot on the way for Hubbard. Oh, you know, she's money from that distance. She's feeling it. She's starting to heat up. We've got that one blocked, though. And here comes Highland Springs. Krudik with the block, and the other way, it's Gatling score. And then Princess Anne with that defense. So many threats in the defensive end, turning it into instant offense, whether it's Peyton Turner, Daniel Goodhope, Brianna Farabee. Highland Springs coming right back, though. And then you see off the dribble, they go give it to Nyla Pollard. Pollard scores. And they got to keep things close here, going back and forth. Last moments of the first half on the baseline. No good. Rebound controlled by Highland Springs. The desperation eve short. But at halftime, it is a 33-21 lead for Princess Anne. So maybe some confidence for Highland Springs, though they're down 12 to get that stop before the half. Princess Anne, they have other ideas. They want to increase their lead as they go there off the dribble. And then in the corner, it's Zaria Wiggins. She's been a breakout player this postseason. Nothing but net. Quiet in the first half, don't let her get going though. 
And here is Good Hope. Look, they try to trap her. Good Hope gets it over. Oh, no, you don't want to get it over to Hubbard. That's why. Hubbard drains the deep three. A couple of D1 players there, Good Hope, going to Winthrop and, of course, Hubbard to Minnesota. And there's a feed inside for Highland Springs. Good for AZ Baycott. But it's an 18-point lead, Andy. PA just does not let up. Underneath is Wiggins. Here comes Wiggins again on the pass, the feed, the miss. Wiggins is there for the rebound, pushes back, step back jumper. Wiggins connects on that one, and then they just drop the brick on the accelerator. There's Hubbard with the jumper just inside the foul line, and then she's going to step back and hit the shot. Oh, she's got range from all over the court. A 71-36 lead for Princess Anne as they are pouring it on. There's Hope Springs are not quite given up yet. Highland inside, there's a score. Coleman gets a score on the runner inside. Outside jumper for Paris McBride. This is all garbage time for him though. There's one final play to try to beat the buzzer. Does it go? And Desiree Mosley does get it at the buzzer. It, a little short though, just a little. So just like the Norcom boys, Princess and girls, they complete the three-peat, their seventh state championship since 2002. And what about Coach Darnell Dozier's record? Tell me about this, Andy. Is this pretty good? 553 and 50 overall. Good grief. That's over 90% if my math is right. Look, they know how to do it, too. Look, they're so custom to it. They just get the trophy and immediately go into the picture pose. It's just like Christmas. You, you know, pose for those pictures. Princess Anne is used to it. Every March, posing for a state championship picture as they win by 23. Godiva, Hubbard, and Zaria Wiggins combining for 46. What about a Hubbard's 5 of 6 from 3-point distance while Bolden with 14 for Highland Springs. Coleman added 10. But Princess Anne, their dynasty in girls basketball, it rolls on. All right, into the big leagues here, the big schools. 6A boys, it is Oscar Smith, and it is Westfield. Same matchup we had in football in the state final. I tell you what, if this game's as good as the triple overtime game that Westfield won on the gridiron, people they are watching it on the hardware are going to have themselves a treat. And right off the bat, it's Corey Jones from three as Westfield has the 6-0 lead. Back the other way, turnover, and they come here again, and this is Westfield showing patience this time, passing it around, good ball moving, and they find Hank Johnson, yes. Three-pointer from outside for Johnson, a 14-2 start for Westfield. You know the secret to Hank Johnson's success? After the game, he was drinking chocolate milk. I tell you what, he, he eats all the right things, drinks all the right things. He <laughs> prepares for games. And Donald Hicks, this guy has been money all year long. The Radford signee, can the jumper, and now looking to operate off the dribble here as Darren Pugh will give it to Hicks here as he's got it just inside the arc. And Hicks, he has been excellent all year long for LeVar Griffin's Tigers. He scores it there. Cut it the lead to eight there. I mean, 19-11, they're getting closer here. So the 14-2 run, a hard hole to dig out of. And then off the miss, it's Johnson getting it back. Scanlon gets the rebound and goes right back to Johnson. And yep, that's tough, man. They keep hitting those threes. It's tough to make a comeback. That's why you drink your chocolate milk. An 11-point lead for Westfield now as Darren Pugh has it. Crossover move. Oh, what a pretty. Move and finish by Pugh, the point guard for the Tigers, filling the shoes of Nigel Roberio from a season ago. And now Westfield has it with a 15-point lead. And, oh, what a cut. Tyler Scanlon finishing inside the Boston University commit. Pass from Corey Jones. Westfield just keeps pouring it on. Oscar Smith trying to stay in, in shouting distance. Just the, the offensive pressure too much for Westfield. And into the corner, there's Blake Francis from three. And it's just too much. Blake Francis, the son of the NFLPA man in charge. Carl Francis as the bloodlines there and the family as athletes. Now Tyler Scanlon here is going to go against Hicks here. That's a great matchup, and he's going to score it there as Scanlon finished two assists shy of a triple-double. Want to see more Scanlon? Well, let's show you more Scanlon. Watch the feed and the finish. Right to the rack goes Scanlon inside off the break. More Scanlon. Scanlon named the VHSL 6A state player of the year. Des Devane saves it, but it's to Scanlon up ahead to Francis, and he will get the layup to go. Westfield cruising by 19. Just back and forth, free throw, no good. Tipped around, and guess who comes down with it? Yep, that's who. A pass up ahead to Francis. Yep, that's Scanlon and Francis. The show continues. Now, didn't we just say that a minute ago? Scanlon yeah. and Francis, the dynamic duo for Westfield, and part of that great tandem from Oscar Smith of Hicks and Devane. There he is, Des Devane from three-point distance. Might be too late, though, as it's a 19-point lead late for Westfield. Oscar Smith continuing to battle as LaShawn Rogers connects on the three in the corner. Lots of threes coming, but it just came too late for the Tigers. 
it looks good on the scoreboard, but it doesn't look good in the final because they're just going to run out the clock. 30 seconds left here. They tip it around. It still lose the tip in by Spellman, but it's just, it's not quite enough. Too much Westfield, who lost in last year's state championship game to Colonial Forge, and they win their first state title in boys basketball to follow up the state title in football. 74 to 56. They won 22 straight before Battlefield beat them in the region championship, and then they win three in a row in the state playoffs. You see LeVar Griffin getting the runner-up trophy. What a great year Oscar Smith had, but too much Westfield in this one. They're going to be hungry for next year. They're going to want revenge in football and on basketball. A lot of the same guys playing both sports. Scanlon was a major factor in those football games as well. And look at the stats here. Blake Francis, a perfect 14 of 14 from the charity stripe. You don't see that too often in high school basketball. Scanlon, as we said, two assists shy of a triple-double. 22, 11, and 8. Donald Hicks fouled out with 14 points in his final game, while Des Devane chipped in 16 points for the Tigers in their first state championship appearance in boys basketball. Well, here's our little trophy, but there are a lot more trophies than what we showed you. We can show you the results of some of those trophies from around other divisions in the uh, state championship. Yeah, let's see the VHSL state tournament championship scores here as Westfield won. We just saw that by 18. Cosby girls completing the three-peat. 42 to 37 as Jocelyn Jones, the UNC commit, had 18. Tyra Whitehead, the Wake Forest commit, a double-double of 12 points and 16 rebounds. On to the 5A division. In the boys division, Potomac 67-61, their champions over L.C. Bird. Jeff Gordon, not the driver, the basketball player, he had 16 points to lead the Panthers to their second title in three years, while Princess Ann Girls winning another state championship 73 to 50 over Highland Springs, no surprise there. On to 4A. It is Monacan 57-53 over Lake Taylor. You saw though, Nick Parks, 14 points for him. And Trevon McPhail, 11 points he kicked in, as well as a couple of blocks, nine rebounds. It's a full stat sheet for him. Monacan girls getting it done too, Andy. A state championship Oof. game record, 93 points. Jane Morris, the George Mason commit, had 33 of her 37 points in the first half alone. And oh, by the way, Megan Walker recently named the Virginia Gatorade Girls Basketball Player of the Year for Virginia. I'm three. To 3A we go, Norcom and Hopewell, you saw that one, what a heck of a finish that game was, and Fields having a big day. Spotswood beats Magna Vista 40-39 after Magna Vista tied it up on a three-pointer late, Addison DeLucas with the game-winning free throw. On to 2A, it is Martinsville over Greenville 69-37. And Devontae Holland, the Radford commit with 23 points and 13 rebounds, while Ridgeview girls edged out Union 51 to 48 behind Kayla Mullins' 19 points. Radford over Lancaster, 54-44, 10 point lead there. And Northwood, a winner over Appomattox Regional Governor's School, that's ARGS if you were wondering. 57-52, Taylor Broyles with 18 points, five assists and five steals. We're out of time. Oh man, it's the end of the season. For Andy Mashaw, I'm and Matt Hatfield. Hat. We're gonna end it on style. We thank all, right. all our hardworking people behind the scenes. Thanks for watching the Cox Sports Report.